Greetings, people of the internet. This is David C. Drake, founder of Golden Drake Studios, and today I am proud to present version 1.1 of the installer for Golden Drake Linux, a custom version of Arch Linux designed for gamers and game developers. So what you're looking at right here is one of two menus that may appear right after you boot from the USB flash drive or CD-ROM that you're using as your installation medium. If you are booting with a system that uses what's called BIOS boot or legacy boot, then this is the menu you'll see. If you're using UEFI boot, then you'll see a simpler menu without colors or a logo, but either way you'll get these same options, and typically you'll just want to choose the one at the top right here, GDL Arch Installer. And at this point, what's going to happen is it's going to be booting up the uh, Linux environment that will be used for installing Linux. You can, of course, also use this installation medium to do some troubleshooting or maintenance on a system that is already installed. Okay, so here we are, and as the dragon says, welcome to Golden Drake Linux, Arch for gamers and game developers. Now, at this point, you are brought to a command prompt, so you can run any commands that you might want to before getting into the installer. For example, uh, maybe you want to run LS blocks. You can take a look at what's going on with your devices, your drives on this system. Um, but uh, typically, you'll just want to jump into the installer. Now, I do have some suggestions there, like you can also look at uh, Arch Wiki articles, whether you're online or offline, by typing wiki search and then whatever you want to search for, like maybe ext4 or better FS or whatever it is you want to look up. Uh, but for now, let's just jump right into the installer by typing GDL and hitting enter. Our first menu is a language selection menu. Now currently, uh, the number of languages available is a bit limited and uh, I do apologize for that. Uh, I am hoping to add more languages in the future, but for now this is what we've got. And for today's purposes, we'll just go with English. Now we select our key map. We're going to go with US. Here's a little bit of information about Golden Drake Linux. GDL is a fork of anarchy developed and maintained by Golden Drake Studios. We hope you find it useful and enjoyable. Please support our work and earn access to our upcoming indie games through Patreon. Patreon.com slash the Drake. As it says here, GDL is simply a customized version of Arch Linux, so the Arch Wiki will be extremely helpful if questions or issues arise. If you encounter a problem specific to GDL, please share the details via GitHub and attach this log file, which is slash root slash gdl.log. And by the way, that file is something that is created during the installation process. It will also be copied to that same location, slash root slash gdl.log, on your new system, so that after installation, you'll still be able to access that log. So we would like you to share uh, that log with us, um, either as a direct attachment or by running a command such as is shown here, share the returned URL if you're using that command, and um, then we will be better able to see what may have gone wrong during the installation. Uh, we also welcome suggestions for improving GDL, and we have listed there our website and the GitHub URL. And finally, there's this useful bit of advice to exit the installer at any time. Press Control C. Now we have the locale menu. This is what determines the language settings and certain other settings for your system. If the selections that we have here in the default menu don't seem to have what you're looking for, then you can also select other down here at the bottom and that will take you to a complete listing of all the locales that are available. Uh, but for now, we are going to go with English US. Now we're going to set a time zone. We have various continent regions. There's also some additional options down here, like uh, some US specific time zones. If you prefer to select among these rather than selecting according to major cities. So for today, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll just go with Pacific. Now we are at the partitioning menu. As you can see, we can choose to auto partition a drive, auto partition with encrypted LVM, or do some manual partitioning. For these auto partitioning options, these are good if you only want to use one drive, one disk for your installation. Uh, if you want to do anything that involves uh, using only part of a drive or parts of multiple drives, anything where you want a little more flexibility, you're gonna wanna go with manually partitioning. Now, one thing I do want to note is that, unfortunately, encryption 
is not an option we have within our manual partitioning menu at this time. We might try to add that in the future. Anyway, here is the manual partitioning menu. Now, in this case, we have two disk drives available, SDA and SDB. SDA already has a couple of partitions on it. Looks like this one was previously used as a boot drive, and this one was the main system partition. We are going to do a setup that does not require a separate boot partition. We also don't need a separate EFI partition because we're not going to be using UEFI for booting. If you are booting with UEFI, then you need to remember to include an EFI partition. We just selected SDA and it's just asking for us to confirm that we want to edit the partition scheme on it. And now we choose a disk utility, CF disk, F disk, or G disk. We're going to use CF disk we have these two partitions here, right? We're going to go ahead and delete both of them. So now we have free space there where that partition was previously. We'll delete this other one. Now we only have free space. Actually, nothing has really been changed yet. Nothing will actually be changed until you use this write feature. So anyway, let's go ahead and create one or two new partitions. We're going to create a main system partition with 19 gigabytes. This will be our root partition. And we're going to use this remaining one gigabyte as, again, a primary partition, and it's going to be used as swap. Now, if you plan on using a partition for swap, you do have the option to go ahead here and change the type from Linux to Linux swap. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to demonstrate another way that you can have it formatted as swap later on. Let's go ahead and write this new partition table to the disk by typing yes. So it's been written. Now we can quit out of CF disk and go back to the installer. Now we can see the partition table for SDA has changed. We have our new 19 gigabyte SDA one partition and this one gigabyte SDA two partition. We also want to make changes to this SDB drive. So once again, we're going to use CF disk. Ah, see now this drive it has not been set up at all yet. So we could choose right now whether to use DOS or master boot record or GPT as the label type. Now our other drive is using uh, DOS or MBR. So we'll go ahead and continue with that here. Typically, most systems these days, you will actually use GPT and you'll also typically be using UEFI boot. But for us, for this virtual machine we're using, we're just using MBR and BIOS boot just to keep things a little bit simpler. So we have 40 gigabytes available. We're just going to create one large partition, primary partition, write those changes, yes, and quit. Okay, so now we have SDA1, SDA2, and SDB1. Now we're not quite done yet. If we try to select done right now, the installer will warn us. Error, you must select a root partition before continuing with install. In other words, we aren't finished here yet because we haven't told the installer what mount points we want or how we want to use these different partitions that we've created. So first we need to choose a root mount point that will be SDA1. Create new root mount point? Yes. Select your desired file system type, ext4, betterfs, or xfs. I recommend BetterFS. This installer will create BetterFS subvolumes for you and provide data compression. And if you install TimeShift, it will facilitate instantaneous creation of snapshots. So we'll go ahead and choose BetterFS or B3FS. Confirm, yes, write changes. So now it is reformatting that partition with the BetterFS file system. By the way, it should go without saying that before you do any of this, before you even launch this installer at all, you should have backed up any important data that might be on any disk drives attached to your system. Even if there are drives that you don't plan on formatting, you should back up any important data on them just in case you make any mistakes, okay? Anyway, so now we have our root mount point marked there for SDA1. Now, what are we going to do with SDA2? Well, like I said earlier, we want to use this as swap. It's asking, do you want to create a new mount point? Well, technically we're not creating a mount point, but in this mount point menu, I have added an option for swap. There are other things here as well, of course, common mount points that people might want for separate partitions like slash home, slash boot, slash GFI, slash OPT, etc. You can also select custom to type your own custom mount point. Like maybe you want 
slash data or something else. Or maybe you want one that's for not just slash var, but specifically slash var slash log. Oops, not lag, <laughs> log, something like that. That is an option for you, but we're not gonna do that. So let's go back into that menu. We want to choose swap. So it's creating a swap space for us now on that partition. What about SDB1? Well, as you can see, SDB1 is much larger than our root file system. This is where we want to have our home partition. Would you like to format the selected partition? Um, in this case, we'll say yes. And once again, we'll choose BetterFS because it has certain benefits that I like a lot. It's good to have a large home partition because, well, in addition to, of course, storing pictures, videos, documents, as well as projects you're working on, this is also going to be typically where you'll be installing any games that you install through Steam or Lutris or other services like that. So anyway, we're not doing anything too complicated. This is pretty simple. Like I said, because we're using BIOS boot, we, in this case, do not need a separate boot partition or EFI partition. Having BetterFS as our root file system, Grub is able to handle that just fine. So no need to worry about that. And yes, Grub is the bootloader that is used for all Golden Rig Linux installations. So we're done. We'll say write changes, confirm writing changes. Yes, of course, most of the changes have already been written, but this is sort of the, you know, the final step. Now we set the host name. This is where you get to name your computer or your system. Uh, we'll go ahead and stick with the default golden. Add user. So we'll set a username of Drake. Set the user's full name, David Drake. Please enter a new login password. Note, root will use the same password. We're using a very long, very secure password, as you can see. Now we select our desktop environment, KDE Plasma Gnome. Cinnamon, or XFCE, each lovingly customized with dark theming, custom keyboard shortcuts, and so on. For full details and screenshots, check out the readme file and wiki pages in the project GitHub linked below in the video description. I currently use the especially fast, stable, and lightweight XFCE environment, and I am especially proud of how I have made that environment a bit more modern and user-friendly but I can also wholeheartedly recommend Cinnamon and Gnome. And for most users, my number one recommendation is actually KDE Plasma. There's just a lot to be said for the types of programs and features that are built into KDE Plasma these days. Now, chances are, if you're using something like this Golden Drake Linux installer, you probably already have your own strong opinions about which desktop environments you prefer. Any piece of software, any desktop environment, they each have different strengths and weaknesses. For today's demonstration, we'll go ahead and go with my number one recommendation for most users, KDE Plasma. Now, I do recommend as the default display manager for KDE Plasma, SDDM, but you could choose LightDM if you prefer. We'll go ahead and go with SDDM this time. Would you like to install the touchpad driver required for touchpad support? For this virtual machine that we're using today, we don't need that, so I'll select no. Install OS Prober. This would be if you're doing dual boot or multi-boot. This is something I haven't done a lot of testing with, but if you are one of those courageous people who's going ahead and setting up dual boot or multi-boot with this installer, then yes, you will definitely want to include OS Prober so that the Grub bootloader will be able to detect the different operating systems that are installed on the various drives that are attached to the system. Typically these days, I don't bother doing dual boot. I just stick with Linux. And for this install, we definitely don't need it. So no. Now we are into selecting optional software. Our first menu here is called Miscellaneous Games. These are various programs that are associated with uh, installing and managing games like Lutris, Steam. Bottles is a great new program for uh, managing Wine and Proton environments. I highly recommend Lutris if you're installing any games that you purchased through GOG, GOG, or if you have games from various other sources. There are just lots of great installer scripts for games from a variety of sources uh, that are very convenient through Lutris. Plus, if you select this by hitting the spacebar, you will also get Wine Staging and a whole list of very useful dependencies installed with it that are necessary or helpful for a wide variety of Windows games and apps. For example, the Blizzard Battle.net app. So that is highly recommended, but for this demonstration, we won't bother with that. Steam, of course, is also recommended, but we won't bother with that today. There's lots of great options here, but we're just going to move forward. If you decide you change your mind about something and you want to go back, in this section you are able to go back by hitting escape or selecting the back button and it will take you to the previous submenu. Anyway, here we have action games. Everything from Super Tux and Frogato all the way down to 
T-Worlds and BZ Flag. Lots of great options here. For this demonstration, we're not going to install a whole bunch of things, but you know, you might want to. You might want to choose a whole bunch of these free and open source games to add to your system. We have adventure games here, even including the original text adventure, Colossal Cave Adventure. Role-playing games. We have everything from OpenMW and Daggerfall Unity and the original Rogue to a whole series of roguelikes and some MMORPGs, etc. Strategy games. Zero AD is an excellent RTS game. We have a few other options here as well, as well as turn-based strategy games, puzzle platformer games, and so on. Racing games. Super Tux Kart is a must-have in my opinion. Extreme Tux Racer is kind of fun too. Our Magatron and Geotron are a couple of Tron-like racing games, and Torx is an interesting 3D car racing game. Simulation construction management games. Dwarf Fortress, I highly recommend. There's also Lin City, Simutrans, etc. Mind Test, if you like Minecraft type games. There is also a launcher for Minecraft itself. You will notice that some of these optional software programs are marked as AUR. AUR stands for Arch User Repository. Anything in the Arch User Repository might carry with it some extra risk as compared to packages that are in the official repositories that have a lot more official monitoring taking place. There is, you could say, a lot of monitoring that takes place in the Arch User Repository as well. However, you can't guarantee that for every package you should do your own monitoring. Packages that are more popular will naturally receive more monitoring from the community. But in any case, part of what I'm getting at here is even though I'm giving you these options to install things from the AUR without being able to directly monitor them, I would hope that you're only selecting things that you already know a thing or two about. You've maybe looked into it a little bit. You do feel that you trust installing those packages. Anyway, we are currently in the game dev and programming section. We have Godot a game engine that I highly recommend. If you like to use Unity, we have the Unity Hub available, as well as the Unreal Engine, and various other options, including various packages that are related to general programming or to level design, such as the Tiled package. Graphic software, GIMP, is always a great package to install. We have Blender, if you're into making 3D graphics. A couple of different voxel editors here, Goxel and Magical Voxel. And if you want to create pixel art, we have Libra Sprite, Asaprite, MT Paint, My Paint, and Krita. Audio and multimedia software. If you are planning to do any recording or streaming, OBS Studio is where you want to go. For editing the videos you create, Kden Live is an excellent option. OpenShot is great too. Simple Screen Recorder is good for very simple screen capture. Um, Mini 2 I've never really used, but you know, it's a program you can install if you want to have a separate program for watching YouTube videos. It's also a program for downloading videos from YouTube. Audacity is fantastic for audio editing. LMMS if you want to create your own music. Pulse Audio Equalizer if you're into that. Spotify if you like that service. Internet software. Typically you will want to select one or more browsers that you like. Perhaps Firefox, Chromium, Google Chrome, Opera. Discord is here if you'd like to use that for chatting. You also have Slack, Hexchat for IRC chatting, and a few other packages including some text-based web browsers. Fonts and language input. So by default, Golden Drake Linux will include some basic TTFs, true type fonts, but if you want to have a more extensive selection of fonts, I do recommend Noto Fonts, and if you also want Chinese, Japanese, and Korean text, then Noto Fonts CJK. Notofonts Extra includes additional variants for certain languages that you may or may not uh, need. You can look into that if you want. Nerdfonts Complete is not something I typically use, but it is popular among some computer geeks. So this option is here if you want it. I have noted that it is a full two gigabytes. So, you know, that will be adding a lot to your download time. Just be aware of that. For those who do want not only to be able to see Chinese, Japanese, and Korean text, but also to type it, I have included a few iBus packages here to allow you to conveniently type in Chinese, Japanese, or Korean. Let's go ahead and include Notofont CJK and iBus libpinning. Now utilities. Earlier during partitioning I mentioned that for better FS systems, time shift can be used to create automatic instantaneous snapshots to serve as system backups. So if time shift is selected for a better FS system, this installer will configure time shift to begin creating automatic periodic snapshots right from the get-go. It will also install time shift auto snap so that any time a package is upgraded, a snapshot will be created right before that upgrade. And finally, 
the Grub BetterFS package will be installed so that any of those BetterFS snapshots that are created will be accessible from the Grub menu. So you can boot directly into a snapshot as a read-only environment. And within that environment, you could then restore one of those snapshots, thus bringing your system back to a previous state without messing with anything in your home directory. Because by default, the at-home subvolume will not be included in those snapshots. And it's a good idea to stick with that configuration and handle your home directory backups through a separate method, possibly storing those backups in an external drive or in a secure online location or both. And if you're not using BetterFS, TimeShift can still be very useful for creating backups either of your system or of your personal files. It just won't be instantaneous like it will be for BetterFS. So anyway, regardless of what file system you're using for your root partition, TimeShift is highly recommended as backup software. We're also going to install HTOP because everybody uses HTOP, right? And there's other options here according to what you want. Install system. Okay, as it says, the installer is ready to actually install the system. So this is your final decision point. If you feel like you made any mistakes or you're having second thoughts about any aspect of your setup, then now would be a good time to cancel out of this. It will give you another chance to uh, change your mind. Like if we select no here, it will say, well, the system's not installed yet. Are you sure you want to exit? If you are sure, then you want to select yes. But actually, let's go back. We are ready to install the system. So let's go ahead.
And there we have it. Installation complete. You may now reboot or run additional commands. Caution your new system still mounted at slash mount. And then the installer does also leave you with a few suggestions, such as, uh, you know, if you want to run a command within the new system, you can use arch to root slash mount, and then the command. Uh, you could read the install log by typing less gdl.log. You could read the arch wiki still if you want to for any additional changes you might want to make to the system before rebooting. By the way, that log file will be in the new system. It has at this point already been copied to the slash root directory of the new system, which we could even access right now by taking a look at slash mount slash root. You can see everything that's in there. By the way, you may notice that I use the LLA alias. There are a number of useful little aliases that I included in the um, .z login file. Let's go ahead and take a look at the log file. For now, there's nothing we need to uh, pay careful attention to here, although it is interesting to see if we look at the amount of usage currently on the root partition, 8.7 gigabytes used, okay? Let's go ahead and reboot and take a look at our new fresh installation of Golden Drake Linux. This time, we're going to select Boot Existing OS. Here's the Grub menu. Okay, and here we are. This is the SDDM Display Manager. You can go ahead and log in. It's just doing a little bit of extra setup right now. And here we are in our brand new, fresh installation of Golden Drake Linux, a custom Arch Linux environment. So let's take a look around. We could go ahead and open our file manager, which is Dolphin. We could open a terminal, which is named console with a K. Let's go ahead and run NeoFetch. We're currently using under 700 megabytes of RAM. That's wonderful. We could also, while we're here, take a look at that uh, time shift configuration that I mentioned. If we type sudo timeshift dash dash list, that will show timeshift backups that we have, if any, or snapshots, I should say. And it says no snapshots on the device. And that is what we should expect. It won't be creating the first snapshot for a while. However, we could do sudo timeshift dash dash check, which says check to see if now is a good time that we might as well create a new snapshot or delete any old ones. So we'll go ahead and run this. And now it has created our first snapshot, which has been tagged as a boot snapshot, an hourly snapshot, and a daily snapshot. And this snapshot will show up in the grub menu from now on, anytime we're booting this machine. So anyway, now your system is ready for you. You could go ahead and get started with any projects you want to set up, things you want to work on, games you want to develop, or you could start playing some games that you may have installed, uh, whatever you want to do. So in any case, I think that will be it for today's video. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more, consider supporting me and Golden Drake Studios through patreon.com slash the Drake, so you can also gain access to our upcoming games. And uh, regardless, uh, thank you for watching. Please do take good care of yourself and uh, leave us a message down in the comment section, and we'll see you next time.